All right, my brother with a very, very intense facial expression. Today we ride to Lincoln. Drinks are on me. Which means drinks are on me. Yeah. Tavana! Another round for everyone! You're the best, Richard. <sighs> it's Sir Richard. Nonsense. We're all brothers, right? It is Sir Richard. Oh. Uh. And here I thought you needed my money for new armour. Oh, I do. A knight is only as good as his equipment. Have you seen Alonzo's sword? With men-at-arms so well-equipped, how could I fight alongside King Stephen less well-equipped? And inferior armour may cost him his life. <laughs> only the best for the best. That is rough. <laughs> I'm stuck between a group of people that is that's like potentially losing their jobs and their livelihoods and I'm preserving some of this income and bargaining and working hard for somebody presumably to be a knight and gain back our lands and our family and uh, honoring his oath and everything. But then he's like buying a round for everyone in the bar. Another round for everyone. Those, those aren't even knights over there or even members of his... I guess he's the knight. The other ones aren't knights, but the other, the uh, everyone else in this place isn't from his group. They're just people that are here at random, and he's buying them drinks with the money that I'm giving him. It's like this is a problem. Hey, you should be more responsible with our money. I spend it on my reputation. What's more responsible than that? Uh, you are paying for other people's wine. Some of whom you don't even know. Knighthood is about more than fighting, Ali. It's a way of life. We fight together, we drink together, we die together. Right you are. To hell and back we go. To hell and back. Alonso, you make that sound like a bad thing. But you could spend our money a little more wisely. Do you want William Hamley to become Earl of Shiring or me? Oh, what kind of question is that? If we're lucky, then he will never return from the Holy Land. He already did. What? We ran into Robert of Gloucester's men. At first, I wasn't sure it was him. He wore the cloak of a crusader. No. Don't do it. Please, have mercy. My God, please. Shh. Don't. And then King Stephen called out his name. William Hamley, join me. We ride. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to upset you. You what? This is not about you or me, Ali. Allowing the father of that monster to remain Earl would not only betray our father, it'd mean betraying everyone. William is a butcher, a filthy bastard without honor. Mind your tongue. You speak of the son of the Earl of Shire. I am the son of the Earl. Sir Richard, your father went against our king and lost his title and his lands. You are not the heir to the title. Not as things are now. What did you just say? Not easy. You treacherous bastard! Calm down. Do you want to slaughter each other and help the enemy? <laughs> Accusing me of treason. You're most royal man at arms. Me or William, choose a goddamn side, Alonzo of Toledo. Come on, choose! Uh, if he picks the wrong side, then we just lose an, a uh, an ally, and that just adds to the list of wasted money. <sighs> Simon's like, things just got choice. awkward now. I've always been your most royal man at arms, have I not? 
Just, I know, I'll stab Alonzo. That'll stop the quarrying. And click, and pling. <laughs> How dare you imply that William and his fat father have a right to my lands? I doubt that would help to stop their quarrelling. Now, now, can't you just agree to disagree? Please. An apology would solve this. I'm sorry. You see? There's nothing to it. I said nothing wrong. Percy Hamley Stadzel is a fact, not an opinion. I've collected our earnings, Richard. Good. At least there's one person I can rely on. My sister. <sighs> can't believe this. I'm sorry, but I can't let you go into war arguing like this. I asked for your money, not for your advice. It is not... Wow, this it. brother I saved the life of is getting along this great with me. So at this point, I think it's safe to assume that the brother can't can die the before now. Otherwise, holy crap, how much divergent content did they make before this part? Because, oh, no. like, he seems kind of important to this part of the game. I'm done talking to you. What's your secret to success? You know, running a tavern. People will give their last shirt for pleasant distractions. Especially when they have a lot they want to be distracted from. Huh, very much you. How would you solve a quarrel like the one over there? Everyone has their own way of coping with aggression. Food, gambling or solace in the arms of a wench. Luckily for me, most resort to drinking. I doubt that'll work here. Don't say that too loud. Try this. <laughs> Don't say that too loud. To say <laughs> Ooh, Never. dark sauce bread, simple, rich in flavor. Let's see. This could help. Maybe Alonzo will chill. The taverner gave this to me. I don't want to ruin Can't his business just forget about by it. giving it away for free. No. What? Don't give it away for free? What was the implication of what I was supposed to do with it then? Do I have to give it to you? Are you just hungry? Eat a Snickers. <laughs> you're not you when you're hungry. Are you serious? Well, excuse me. Oh, I take that that wasn't the solution. Huh. This is how I resolve a Do quarrel, is a, is a flatbread that no one will have. Um. Well, I thought this was a no-brainer, but apparently it's not a no-brainer. Like, at all. Can't we just forget about it? No. Would you like to order? Oh, thank you, but I'm just here to see my brother and his men before the battle. Taverns used to be well visited. One can barely find a seat. One could, back then. Do I give it to you? If they're hungry, they can order food. Uh. <sighs> Are you just hungry? Are you serious? Uh, well. He has to do a very little slow animation between lines of dialogue, so he has like this weird delayed reaction. I want to say something? I didn't realize this was like a mystery. I thought that this is gonna be really obvious what to do with the food. What what the what's the food for then? Obviously they have no idea how to settle a conflict without a fight. Can't we just forget about it? Did he just, like, nonsensically give me some food out of nowhere? Do I need to get- do I- Does he- is- was this the NPC just being like, I know, I'm in a video game. 
I'm supposed to give the protagonist a weird item to exchange for another item to exchange for another item so they can solve a weird adventure game quest. Is that what's happening here? Should I trade it for the meat? Would you like something to eat? I only accept food from Meg. She's a tradeswoman. And the food others throw at me is rotten. But she gives me good food. Meg is one of my best friends. Oh, yes? Then I accept. I'm so hungry. You're so nice. How can you afford giving some girl a whole slice of bread? I'm a tradeswoman. Oh. When I grow up, I'll leave Shiring and make lots of money too. So when I return, Auntie doesn't have to worry about bad men asking for money anymore. Bad men? Very bad men. Don't you think you should take that meat to its owner? Yes, I must. Just need a little break. Time to catch my breath. Carrying a hunk of meat. At her age, I only ran around for play. Um... How would you settle a fight? If you're in trouble, run. Oh, but they're usually friends. Running wouldn't help. Then let them play a game to decide who's right. <laughs> Good idea. Maybe a game will help stop their quarreling. Okay. A game. Would that dialogue have happened without the food? Because uh, I'm kind of wondering if I just wasted the food. Uh, I was just kind of scrambling a bit. I was like, surely the food is what they need. And then it's like, that wasn't the result? But like, he gave me the food to resolve the fight. So I was like, just confused when that's not what where the game went next. Play a game. Do you have any games? Um, not with me. How about you and your friends play hide and seek? Though the sheriff doesn't like that, so better not. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. Mm, no, that's not the kind of game the girl was talking about. No games here. Do you have any games with you? We carry the French game of Fiers with us. Oh, could I borrow it? If you bring it back before nightfall, I see no harm in it. I, I will. Bierge, a French board game. Richard and I used to play it. Is it checkers? Is that... Is that what, is that what we call checkers? It looks like checkers. That's my best guess. <laughs> Doesn't look like chess at the very least. <sighs> Maybe this will work out. Maybe you just need to give her food so that she'd talk to you and then suggest the game. Maybe I'm not screwing up. <laughs> now fight it out like real knights should. With a battle of wits. Playing a board game, uh, I don't know. You're scared I could win. <laughs> oh, let's begin. Now, let's start with a careful opening. Wait, why did... I, I have to have input here? I can't just let him do what he wants to do? Um... Am I implying what he should do to do his job? Am I affecting how he's going to do as an actual knight? Like if he's, if I, if he's aggress- First of all, why is he loudly announcing his actions in a port? He's not a very good tactician, is he? Uh, YOLO. No, the battlefield is no place to get cozy. Hey, don't rush me. I know what I'm doing. First, I'll focus on defense. Let's see what Alonso's got. Played. A classic opening move. Now is a good time to attack. Oh, 
Sometimes victory lies in numbers, but often it lies in a single soldier at the right spot, right? Yes, and I play to win. And here I stride to victory. Ah. You reach the end of the board. What a crowning! I got a king! Hmm. You call this piece a king? In Spain, we call it a queen. She's quite powerful and has a mind of her own. All right, a queen then. Now I can sweep the entire board with her. No, don't be hasty. The highest art of war is to break the enemy without a fight. Nonsense. I have to seize this advantage. I've got a queen on my side. Time to rampage. When the sovereign has been claimed, the game is almost decided. Oh. I could fight to the last piece. But a good commander has foresight, and I can see this game is lost. I admit defeat. Ah, uh, you ended this before it even began. Even a scribe would struggle making this an epic of glory. This was about strategy, not showmanship. Huh. Uh, it seems like Lady Aliena is a valuable strategic advisor. This is a good start, but, but you have a long way to go. You're always so critical. I understand that he's the tactician, and I endeavour to trust his instincts and experience to guide him. But you yourself are an exceptional diplomat and businesswoman here. You complement each other in the way you think. I guess you're right. If you are wise enough to trust this queen's instincts in this matter, my friend, you too will indeed be able to take back the earldom. You think we can do it? So, can I rely on your loyalty? You can. Of course, we're brothers in arms. <laughs> Good. You've an important battle ahead of you. I'll bring you the money. Look at us fixing them up with the power of board games. Now I'm going to be a good person and go return it. Right, we can double click to get there faster. So it is definitely checkers. You've done me a great favor. We are glad to hear it. Thank you for returning it. We always pass the time on our travels trying to best each other. Of of the small group of them, one of them is blind. Does he have an excellent memory? Or does he have to feel for the pieces the whole time? Oh, but you can't feel for the pieces because they're color-coded. Uh-oh. Here. Finally. I mean, thank you, Annie. This will cover decent equipment. Nothing exceptional, but it will do. <laughs> Just promise to be careful. I've learned a few tricks. I'll be fine. Must you really fight? What is all this good for? For father, Ali. I will save Shiring from Percy Hamley. But who is going to save you? With men like these, I'm afraid I'm already beyond saving. For victory! For victory! For victory! I see. I wish you the best of luck. I'll be at the marketplace with Philip. And make more money, I hope. Return safely. I'm a knight, Ali. Not a child. Doesn't matter if you're a child or not. Knights kill each other, don't they? When you when you go in single combat to the death, you have a 50% success ch uh, chance. Kind of. 
Please, try to keep them from fighting. <laughs> uh, that's a big task for a slender man like me. You're a knight, for God's sake. Good luck. <laughs> it's not about luck. It's about making the right decisions. I'm a sharp sword. Oh, hopefully Alonzo can keep him alive. That's a rough thing for the game. Uh, the triangle they've given us now to balance between how ruthless of a businesswoman are you and and then how much do you balance your earnings between your own sibling and an entire village. It's your sibling versus your village versus your customers. And there can only be one winner. Or you can do what I did and split it between two of them, which probably means that everyone loses. Hooray! Can't wait to see how that turns out. Things are taking place. Have you finished your business? Our generation to an end. Yes. Glad to hear it. Philip, I now understand why our market at Kingsbridge has had more visitors lately. Shiring isn't what it used to be. Steep taxes and strict laws have taken their toll on the town. Is that so? These merchants would give anything to do their business at another fleece fair, but there's none nearby. They need a place with fair taxes, one that can put those taxes to good use. Are you thinking of a fleece fair in Kingsbridge? Call in the monk and the woman he's with. You, impatient monk. It's your turn, the girl too. Me? What, did you want me to come with you? No. We're not first in line, are we? Well, lucky you then. Get moving. <clears throat> well, this sounds like a trap. Also, a fleece fair sounds like a great way to get more undue attention you don't want that gets this castle cancelled. Gwyneth, Prior of Kingsbridge. The Earl of Shiring. Thank you for hearing me, old Percy. Please allow me to introduce my friend, Aliena of Kingsbridge. I knew it was you. <gasps> oh, it doesn't sound like you missed me. I demand to talk to the Earl of Shiring. He has broken his word. You are talking to the Earl of Shire. Bishop Whaleran? The enemies of this earldom have taken Percy Hamley from our midst. Mother! <laughs> Do you consider yourself a friend of the earldom of Shire, Philip? Friend? Damn monk is drinking the blood of my earldom! It is not for us to damn them, Lord William. But judge them we must. What you are doing to the people of Shiring is shameful. Your father would have done well to teach you respect. The monk's a thief and so are you. And I don't take as kindly to thieves as my father did. Shiring will change. What crimes did we commit then? The king has never licensed a market in Kingsbridge. Your market is illegal, Philip. You are stealing my taxes by allowing my people to trade in your sorry priory, and you disrespect my authority! Is that true, Philip? I... I will talk to the king about this. You and your friends have always played by your own rules. But not anymore. A fracture for fracture? Eye for eye? Tooth for tooth? The days of Kingsbridge Cathedral are over. Now leave. The next time I will show no mercy.
God damn. So apparently the Earl of Shiring is dead again. Again already. Like twice in one book already so far. And I mean that as like this middle chapter of the game, not the the actual book in space. Why'd they call them books? <laughs> chapter 11, The New Earl. What she did, Eliana was a support and an inspiration to a young delivery girl. Eliana solved the sales conflict with, uh, to her own advantage. Eliana showed good skill as a merchant. Eliana split her money evenly between Richard and Philip. Eliana and Richard were a functioning team. Eliana returned the board game to its rightful owners, the monks. Eliana helped Philip to pay his workers early. Whaler and, and William, the new Earl, declared Philip's market illegal. Great. I, I bet it made a bit of a hasty decision there at the end because it was like very... It's a very short quicktime event for a lot of text to read. So I was like, oh shit, what are the two options? Uh, this one's like, uh, defend people of Shiring versus, uh... Uh, uh, demand the resource for the cathedral. And it's like, ah! Like, it was... <laughs> they had to make a very quick choice there that was ticking down quickly. So, things are a mess. <laughs> An absolute mess. Uh, it's funny, because, like, this is actually... Like, I don't know how many branches there are and how much you actually impact stuff by making choices and everything, but this is the type of uh, intensity of developing storylines and being split between these different options and everything that, like, I used to get from Telltale games. Basically from, like, the w Walking Dead Season 1 era to the Wolf Among Us era. And... It's gone. Because, <laughs> like, those, like their, their way of doing things has just fallen apart in the meantime, unfortunately. But this is kind of doing that. I've heard terrible things about the Game of Thrones game, which I have not played. And people are saying that this is... More than one person has already said that this is, like, what it should have been. It's interesting to see that. I had assumed that as long as the market was held within the walls of the Priory, and the taxes supported the construction of our cathedral, Kingsbridge would need no market license. I had made a foolish mistake. Now I had no option but to call on King Stephen for help. And as Aliena suggested, I joined the knights on their way north to Lincoln. So now we need to get King Stephen to declare our market legal and our and specifically endorse the building of this church this cathedral or nothing's going to happen and we're doomed because the local uh, Earl uh, very explicitly and directly has it out for us because he's a spiteful cunt. More and more men joined our group. Most of them had no horses and no weapons to speak of. As King Stephen prepared for his final battle against Robert of Gloucester, he had ordered all able men of his earldoms to fight in the north. Then, at nightfall, our group reached a large camp of Stephen's men. We can go to sleep or walk through camp. Uh... On one hand, you could potentially encounter something that's that could be in some way useful. On the other hand, Philip could put himself at risk for it in all sorts of different ways because he's just not one for defending himself in general. But I just am always curious about what scenarios I can encounter. Many men asked me to pray with them. They were husbands, fathers, and children about to fight in a war that most of them did not understand. It was then that I witnessed Aliena's brother Richard shouting at a man. The man was in tears, saying he did not want to fight and begging to be allowed to go home. Do I start? Do I go out against him for the way he's behaving? For someone that's planning on leaving? Or. Ah. Uh, or do I avoid interfering and just let this happen? 
I mean, honestly, Philip can't do can't help but stick his nose in, in everything so far. I told Richard to have pity. Full of anger, he told me that he would hang deserters himself if need be. Then the man interrupted us by shouting infamities about Robert of Gloucester and started to laugh. Richard and his knights joined in and began to cheer for the king. Richard seemed to me just as desperate as the young man, but he did not know it. His temper would not make him a just earl, I thought. But again, I hoped to see a cruel man win his battles, only to defeat a man more cruel than him, William Hamley. Now, there's a harsh outsider judgment that you're not going to get directly from uh, Aliena, but as a third, as a third-person character, a third party, I mean, we get a different response 